how are you doing? Once again, and I'm so much thankful today because um, God has given us this opportunity so that we may be able to study something which is quite important. Uh, like you can see here, we have the 7,000 years of humanity or the human history. Do you know that the world has a history of 7,000 years? And this is why it's very important to understand these facts because there are so many people who say uh, human beings evolved from maybe some monkeys and uh, others they say it was a big you know the whole thing of big bang and evolution theory and others say we drop from i don't know from the skies and all that you know <laughs> like i also heard some guys saying you know like um, human beings evolved from the big bang and the big bang theory it speaks that something you know everything came from nothing how can how can you have everything coming from nothing like you see like here there's nothing and then all of a sudden boom there's everything has planted itself i think that's one of the biggest lies of the devil and uh, he tries to confuse people and tries to make them think that there is no god and uh, and uh, one thing i like to say is that the whole aspect of creation is there god created everything creation and uh, and everything and the bible is very much against uh, evolution it speaks so much against that because the, it, it, there's a lot of evidence in the bible and that one initially just makes you understand that there is a god because this bible is full of evidences it's full of a lot of evidences and for those who believe in evolution let me tell you one thing evolution is a religion it's just a religion of people who believe in some weird thing if you're among those guys who believe in evolution then <laughs> i don't know i don't know what to say but the bible has all evidences here it it, it tells us um, when we were made who made us and everything because we have the creator of the universe the one who created us telling us the whole story you know it's history is just a matter what I can say, history just literally means his story, you see? Let me just write somewhere here. History, history is literally his story, all right? Who? This is God, all right? God's story. This is, he just explained to us what happened how it will be, how it was back then, how it is right now, and how it will even be in the future. And it's very important for us to be able to understand because the Bible tells us in 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved. Uh, 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 let, let me just read for you. Let me read for you so that we can uh, be there together. 2 Timothy Second Timothy uh 215 the bible tells us very well what, what we need to do all right 215 study to show thyself approved unto god a workman that needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth you have to study you have to study so that you can be able to understand and divide the word of truth that is very very important so today's message is going to be all about a certain code there's a certain prophetic code that uh, uh, god has given us in the book of second peter 3 8 second peter uh second peter 3 8 it, it, it tells us one thing that to god one day is like a thousand years one day to God is like a thousand years. All right? And a thousand years is like a day. All right? So this is uh, the code that we're going to be using today. And uh, I believe it's going to be something that... Um, it's going to be something which will uh, create a lot of impact to you. Three eights. All right? One day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like one day, according to God. We can just, if you want to read that, we can um, check it out together, exactly what it says. 
so that you can be able to understand it really, 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 really well. Second Peter 3, 8, the Bible says, Beloved, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Why is God telling us this? It's because he wants to reveal something about the years of humanity. All right. So now, having understood that, we, I want us to go straight ahead and go and uh, be able to understand how did God create the universe. Let's go to Genesis. Genesis 1, Genesis 1 uh, verse 1 to 5. The Bible tells us how God created uh, the universe. From verse 1 to verse 5. Uh, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and darkness he called it night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. So the first day, we see God creating uh, light. So this is the first day God created light. All right. The first day God created light. Let's go to the second day, Genesis 1, 6. And God said, let there be firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which are above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. All right. So we see the second day, God creating water. Okay. Water. That is the second thing which God created. And I'll write it here. Uh, water. All right. So we have light the first day. Then the second day, we have water. The waters. All right. Let's go to the day three, the third day. The third day, uh, let's read it from uh, Genesis 1. 9 to 13. And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called the seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, and the herb yielding seed, and the food, the, the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. So the third day we see a couple of things which, uh, which were created. We see there is uh, the land, sea, Sea, seed, and fruit. All right. We have land, land, sea, uh, sea, sorry, seed, and fruit. All right. That is what was created on the third day. Uh, land, seed, land, sea seed and fruit and uh, we continue in the this is the third day the fourth day the fourth day we can read it from uh, genesis 1 14 to 19 and god said let there be lights in the firmaments of heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years all right uh and let them be for lights in the firmament of the and, and let them be for 
for lights in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth, and it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. Uh, and God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. So the fourth day we see a couple of things which God created. That is a light, uh, the sun, moon, and stars. The light, sun, moon, and stars. The light, sun, moon, and stars. All right. Then now that is uh, the fourth day. Then the fifth day, the fifth day, we see God creating uh, another thing. Genesis 1.20 to 23. 120 to 23. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that has life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales. <coughs> Excuse me. God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, with which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind. And every ringed fall after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the sea, and, and let the fall multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. So the fifth day, we see the main thing which was created here is uh, life. We see life started coming up on the fifth day. Life uh, here. Uh, let me write here. Life. We see life began on the fifth day. Then let's go to the sixth day. Let's see what happened on the sixth day. The sixth day, Genesis 1, 23 to 31. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. All right, that is the fifth day. Good. And God said, 24, And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle, creeping thing, and beast of the earth after his kind. And it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth, after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And God said, Let us make man in our own image, our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fall of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And so God created man in his own image, in the image of God, created he him, male and female, created them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fall of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given every herb-bearing seed which is upon the face of the earth, and every tree, and the which is a fruit of tree yielding seed, and you shall it shall be for meat, and to every beast of the earth, and to every fall of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein is is life, I've given every green herb for meat, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So the sixth day, God created the beasts, and he also created man. We see two main things which are created here. That is the beast and man. All right. We're already understanding what was being created day in, day out, every day as God was doing his creation. Let's see the last day. What happened? Genesis 2, 1 to 3. Thus the heavens 
and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. So God rested on the seventh day. So we have rest on the seventh day. So now, the Bible is very clear about what happened in the time of creation, how he created the whole earth. Now, is there something that God was telling us by the whole aspect of creating the, the, the earth in this way? The first time we have the light, we have water, we have land, sea, seed and fruit, we have light, sun, moon and stars, we have life on the fifth day, we have beast and man on the sixth day, and then we have rest. Now, let's see. Could this be a coincidence, also God telling us how the world will be over the years, over the generations? Because remember one thing, the Bible told us, gave us a code that 2 Peter 3, 8, one day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like one day to God. So is God trying to tell us something about the, the history of humanity, how it's going to be from this to this to this to this to this, all right? Let's, let's check. In the beginning, this time, uh, the first, first, very, very first time before the first guys, we see um, the book of Romans 2.12, 2 verse 12 to 15. It tells us something about what happened back in the days when people were living uh, in the early days. Romans 2 verse 12. Romans 2 verse 12. And we'll go all the way to 15. Romans 2.12 For as many have sinned without law shall also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. For when the Gentiles, for when the Gentiles which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law. This having not the law are law unto themselves. I want you to get something here. Verse 15. Which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts the mean while accusing else, accusing one another. So the guys before the law, the early guys here, we see... Uh, this is the time of Adam. Adam. Uh, around the time of Adam, these guys, the Bible tells us, these guys who did not have the law, how were, was God judging them? He was judging them through conscience. So we see this is the time of conscience. All right? So they had conscience. This is the time. That conscience was the only thing which could be able to save humanity. But uh, something happened and these guys could no longer, could not use their conscience. They could feel this is not good to do this, not good to do this, but they still do it. And what happened? We see the Bible telling us what really happened. This is the time we see... People, instead of using conscience, most of them were really rebellious, all the time rebelling. And that's why we usually have these false guys who call themselves Luciferians. And they, they, they try to tell people that you will be illuminated, you know, you'll have the light, you'll be illuminated, we'll illuminate you, we'll give you, eh? we will make you understand things that you cannot understand. We'll give you some different conscience, we'll... we'll give you a false light those the illuminati guys the Luf luciferians they try to win people because that time most of the people who are not saved number one they don't know the law of the law of god they are, maybe they have never heard because the moment you understand the law of god you get a burden of sin and the only way you can get out that burden of sin is through the cross of jesus christ so if you don't know the burden if you have never read the bible if you have never understood anything all that you have is conscience. All that you have is conscience. And you're looking for the light. Alright? Let's go to uh, what happened around this time. This time we see the Noah. The Noah's Ark coming in. Let's, let's go and check uh, 
Genesis 6, 5. Genesis 6, verse 5. Genesis 6, verse 5. Something happened in the time of Noah. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of, of, the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it he repented the law that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man who have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping thing and the falls of the air. And it repented me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And this, uh, okay, these are generations of Noah. Let's go to verse 11. And the earth was so corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said to, unto Noah, the, the end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And I behold, I will destroy them. I will destroy them with the earth. So we see something happens in the time of Noah, whereby we, everybody knows the story. God destroyed the earth with flood. There was a lot of flood, and Noah lived around uh, 2500 BC, around there. So 2500 BC, it's around here, all right, 2000 years. So we, we see a great flood, all right, Noah's flood. So, oops, something has just fallen here, uh, let me put it back. So we see the flood falling down, and the flood is literally water, a lot of water, a lot of water. So God is trying to tell us something about the human history. He's trying to explain to us what would happen even in the future. So the first time we're seeing people are all about conscience, light. We see now the flood, all right? Flood is very a lot a lot a lot of water okay this is the time when people have started uh, doing wrong things to god and they don't want to use their conscience so god destroys the earth with water so let's continue and see what happened next on this this time here the third day so something happened there's a guy called abraham Abraham, at that time it was called Abraham. Let's see Genesis 11, 29 to 31. 11, 29 to 31. And Abraham and Nahor took them, uh, took them wives. Uh, the name Abraham's wife was Sarai. And the name of Nabal's, uh, Nahor's wife of Micah, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah, and the father of Asa. But Sarai was barren and he had no child, and Terah took uh, Abram his son, and Lot the son of Haran and his son, and, son, and Sarah his daughter-in-law, with them from Ur of the Chaldeans into the land, mark that word, into the land of Canaan. And they came unto Haran and dwelt there. Alright, so we see something here. We see Abram moving into a land so we see here there's uh, the land this is the time of abram all right all right so we see they moved to a land which was called canaan from the ur of the chaldeans let's continue let's check uh, down there what also happened Genesis 12, 1 to 3. 12, 1 to 3. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house and unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. All right. Uh, and I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee and you shall be families of the and all the families of the earth shall be blessed. All right. So who are being blessed? Your seed. 
the seed of Abraham shall be blessed. Let's continue. Uh, 12 verse 7. And the Lord appeared unto Abraham and said, Unto thy seed I will give this land. And there builded, and there builded he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. Who appeared unto him. So we see Abraham being told, Go to a land that I will show you. And he was told his seed, that is the fruit of his loins, would be blessed. And all the people in the world would be blessed will be blessed through Abraham. So we already see the seed has already been declared here. And also another very funny and weird, I don't know it's a coincidence or something. We also see another guy called Moses here and this time, who also appeared around this time. And Moses was told to take the Israelites from a certain land to another land. All right. And what happened? They also crossed the Red Sea. So you see, here already we are, it's like the Bible is trying to tell us the events which are happening in the world. So we see Abraham being given the land. He is told that the, your seed will be blessed, the fruit of your loins. And also we see Moses leading the Israelites through the Red Sea. Okay, that is really interesting. Let's continue. Let's see what happens. Uh-huh. Let's see what happens in the fourth day. And how is it connected to the human history? The fourth day. We see the fourth day, a guy called Jesus show up, shows up. Everybody knows that Jesus uh, showed up at, a, at around, uh, around 4000 BC. Everybody almost uh, knows about this. Okay. Jesus showed up around... 4000 BC, that is uh, uh, around that time, because he died, he, he was born around here, all right, he was born around here, and this around here is when he died, all right, born, sorry, born, so Jesus showed up around just before the fourth, 4000 years, uh, 4,000 years are over, around there, that's when Jesus showed up. Everybody knows about the story. So now what happens about this man, Jesus? We know, the Bible says in John 8, 12, John 8, 12, we can go there if you have a Bible, John 8, 12. The Bible tells us something about this man, Jesus. Then, then spoke Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. So Jesus is the light. Here we have Jesus, who is the light. All right. Jesus is the light of the world. This is John, the book of John 8, 12. Jesus, we see he is the light of the world. Let's see also something else about... Uh, Something else about him. In Malachi 4.2, we see something else which is quite interesting. Malachi. Uh, Malachi. Uh, Malachi is just the last book on the Old Testament. Malachi 4, verse 2, the Bible says, But unto you... Uh, but unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings and you shall go forth and grow up as cows of the stall. So we see Jesus is being called the son of righteousness. The son of righteousness. The son. So we see Jesus the light. He's the son. All right. Let's continue seeing. He's the son. Wow, that is really amazing. We also see uh, in Revelation 22, 16, Revelation 22, verse 16, the Bible calls Jesus another name. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the, the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. So you can see Jesus is the star. So we are seeing the star. Who is Jesus coming to show up, showing up around this time, all right? We also see uh, the three wise men, they saw a star. 
And we also see so many things about Jesus showing up around this time. So you see, just around 4,000 uh, 4, years after creation, a guy named Jesus came in. So this is trying to show us exactly how the history of humanity, human, human, uh, humans, has already been predesigned by God. It, God already knew how things are going to come and how things are going to be because he already gave us a code here. One day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like a day. And God created the earth in seven days. And so he wants to show us that in those seven days, I have some things that I've already predesigned for the world. And uh, let's continue. So we see something else. Um, we see something else which is happening on after Jesus has come we are told something that Jesus when he came he established life all right he established eternal life after his death everybody knows how the death of Jesus was everybody knows uh, that Jesus died a very painful death he shed his own blood he shed a lot of blood and uh, through this blood we have been able to be redeemed and through this blood we got a, we got the propitiation Jesus was a he was the propitiation <laughs> let me let me read his blood became the propitiation for our sins let's go to Romans 3:25 they can show you this Romans 3 verse 25 uh-huh Romans 3.25 says, In whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remissions of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. So, when Jesus came through in the picture here, we already see that we had something which Jesus came and offered which was eternal life. Okay? Sorry about that. Eternal life. So we see already now, here we had life, you see? We had life before here. Uh, we have life here, yes. Life shows up in the fifth day. So now here, we already see Jesus himself giving the eternal life. So already God planned that around that time is when life will come. And that is when Jesus showed up. Are you getting something? Now, after that, we see something else happening. Around this time, the sixth day, something else is going to happen. Okay? In the book of Revelation, Revelation 13, 16 to 18, we see something else happening here. 13, 16 to 18. And he causeth all, both small, great and rich and poor, free and born, to receive a mark in their hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save is he, he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him, he that has understanding, count the number of the beast, for it is a number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. Okay? So now, around this time, we're going to see another guy showing up who is called the Antichrist. All right. So this Antichrist, he'll be associated with the beasts and will be associated with man. So we're already told he has a number of a man. The number of, the, of a man is 666. All right. And within this time, around this time, this is where now the rapture will happen around here. Okay. The rapture will happen around here. Okay. We already see that this man will be showing up around this, this time. So now, just before this guy shows up is when the rapture will happen. But around this old sixth day is when now we see the whole issue about the Antichrist showing up. So that's, that seems to be a lot of coincidence. I don't know if it's coincidence or... Uh, 
how do you see the whole thing? Is is it could it be a coincidence? Could God have arranged all these things just to show us something, just to explain something to us, to tell us what will happen in the future? All right? Because already we see this, this beast. Why, why, why this number? The Bible already tells us why this guy has this number, the 666. Why, 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 why do we have that number? Because the Bible tells us very well in Genesis 5.3, after man sinned, you can just go there and see. Uh, Genesis 5 verses 3. After man sinned, he was no longer in the image of God. He was in the image of another guy. Mm. Genesis 5 verse 3. And Adam lived a hundred and thirty years and begat a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. Why was it after the image and likeness of Abraham? Uh, of, of Sorry, of uh, Adam. Because Man, a man has three parts. All right, we you have the body, the spirit, and the soul. All right, so these are three parts. Human being has the three parts: the body, the spirit, and the soul. Remember when Jesus, God, was creating man, He said, "Let's create man in our own image, in our own likeness." With three parts, okay? But now when man sinned, the spirit died. Alright? So now he was no longer having three parts. He was having two out of three parts. So two out of three parts, if you divide just the same, this one, you will get point six, six, and 6. So, so this one already represents who man is, the sinful nature of man. But now when somebody gets saved... The spirit comes alive. And when the spirit comes alive, you have three out of three parts, which is uh, the image of God. All right? And without this image of God, you cannot be able to enter heaven. You cannot be able to go to heaven. So it's very, 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 very important for you to understand that if you're not born again, you're in the image of man. The image of man, the number of man is this one. And you already understand the whole uh, issue which comes uh, through that. Because the Bible is, is a book which tells us about the, the past, what really happened in the past, what's happening right now, and what is even to happen in the future. And if you don't understand these things, you'll have yourself to blame. All right? So now we see the last day, the day of rest. What happens? The Bible tells us that Jesus comes back at the battle of Armageddon. And uh, he will set up the kingdom, his kingdom in Jerusalem and rest for a thousand years. All right. So he'll set up a throne in Jerusalem. A throne. Throne in Jerusalem. All right. So he will rest. He will rest. Let's, let's just go there and check uh, the Bible verse which talks about that. Revelation 24. 20 verse 4. Revelation 20 verse 4. Revelation 20 verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, uh, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So those guys, they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand, a thousand years. So that is where they will be, in the throne in Jerusalem, resting with Jesus Christ a thousand years. So if you check this whole timeline, you really understand that God wanted to prove and to explain something about how the whole human history is like. And it's very important to understand this because there's also something very, very <laughs> weird and funny that is uh, in, in Hosea, Hosea, the book of Hosea. Maybe you can just go there to the book of Hosea. Let me show you what... what uh, the prophet Hosea is saying here. Hosea 6 verse 6 verse 1 and 2. Let's see what it says here. Come, 
Let us return unto the Lord, for he has torn and he will heal us. He has smitten and he will bind us up. Now, this is talking about the, the, the Israelites. Eh? Remember, for 2,000 years, 2,000 years after Jesus was crucified, 2,000 years, the Israelites have been, they have been in, in uh, you see, that they lost their land and they were already taken captive in different countries for 2,000 years. 2,000 years. And what happened? This is happened after they killed Jesus. The, 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 the Bible says, uh, I will strike the shepherd. The shepherd is who? Jesus Christ. And the sheep will scatter. So they had scattered for 2,000 years. They were from one kingdom, Middle Persia, to Roman kingdom, and this and that. All those 2,000 years. And the nation of Israel was almost done. But see what the prophet Hosea says. Come and let us return unto the Lord, for he has torn and he will heal us. He has smitten and he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. In the third day, he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. After two days, when are these two days? The Bible says what a day to God is like a thousand years. A thousand years is like one day. So after two days... After this time, they have been scattered for 2,000 years. After two days, so it must be somewhere near the end of the two days, all right, two days, he will revive us. When were Israelites revived? In 1948, 1948, they were revived. They became again a nation. The nation of Israel was born. And see what it says here. And the third day, he will raise us up. The third day. The third day must be when? Around here. So he will raise us up. He will raise us up. And we shall live in his sight. So where will be the sight of God? He will be in Jerusalem, in his throne. And that is where he will be with them. So that one tells you already we are towards the rapture. It's about to happen because this one has to happen. All this has to happen when the Christians are already out. We will go out. The Antichrist will come in, and then those, we, we have a time called the time of the tribulation here. Or another name is called the, the time of Jacob's trouble. Who is Jacob? Jacob is Israel, so they'll have some trouble because the Bible says blindness has come to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles. Who are the Gentiles? We, who are not Israelites, who are not Jews, we are the Gentiles. God gave us a chance so that we can be saved. And then God will go back to dealing with Israel here. And he will save them. The Bible says that, and all Israel will be saved. Everybody in Israel will be saved. Okay? Of course, there are several people in Israel who will not adhere to that. But at the last minute, every Israelite will be saved. So have you understood something? Have you understood the history of humanity? Because the Bible, as I wind up, the Bible tells us so much about humanity and and, and all this and what happens. And even the Bible is very, very much clear. In the book of Leviticus 25.10, already the Bible has told us uh, something about the Jubilees. I'm sure you have heard the Jubilees. God gave the Israelites the Jubilees. That is 50 years to celebrate. All right? Celebrate 50 years, 50 years, Jubilee. Why Jubilees? 50 years. Of Jubilee and he said watch watch the Jubilees very very well and this is something that Jesus really said in Leviticus 25 10 he spoke about this and said I've given you this so that you can celebrate every 50 years Jubilee and there's something that God said God said one thing yeah? in Genesis 6 3 he said my spirit will not always strive with man for his flesh his days will be 120 years. And do you understand something that from the time of Adam here, Adam here, up to the time of, uh, up to the time here, the sixth day, it's already 120 jubilees. It's 120 jubilees. From the time of Adam to the to the sixth day, that is the 6,000 years, we already have 120 jubilees, okay? And you know, God has already said what? My spirit will never strive with man. 
His days will be 120 years. Could God be saying something? Could he be saying something? So, are you saved? Are you... Do you understand what the Lord says? Do you understand all this? Do you understand how soon we are about to get out of this earth? And for those people who keep on saying, you see, we came from, we evolved from monkeys and we came from monkeys and all that. Let me ask you, if we evolved from monkeys, then why do we still have monkeys right now? Why do we still, if you say nothing came from, you know, everything came from nothing, then why don't you have a lot of, how can something which just blew up and, Create things with order. You know, and if, if you throw a bomb somewhere right now, you cannot have order. It is a lot of chaos. How can you, how can you explain the DNA of human beings? You, you mean something blew all of a sudden and then there was a man with a brain. The brain is here. The heart is here. The lungs are here. Everything. How, how, how did it happen? How, where can you get such kind of an order? Your thumbprint is not the same with any other person in the universe. Hmm? Your DNA is different. The DNA of a... Come on. I don't think uh, things blowing up can create any order. Jesus is coming soon. And you have to believe in the gospel. Believe in the gospel so that you don't be left behind. And many people can ask me, so what is the gospel? Why, why do you tell me believe in the gospel? The gospel is what can save you. And the gospel is found in... It's found in, uh, let me write for you, the gospel. It's found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. That's where we found the, find the gospel. And it says how Jesus died for our sins. He, rose again, he was buried. He rose again according to the scriptures. If you believe that Jesus died and he died for our sins, he was buried. He rose again according to the scriptures. You believe that with all your heart after understanding, then you are saved. And that's the only thing which is going to get you saved. So brothers and sisters, thank you very much for having listened. It's been a wonderful time. Hope you have enjoyed this lesson. So um, you, can, you can share to other people. You can also take a screenshot. And I'm sure God will bless you. See you next time. God bless you.